It's time to talk truth, and the truth is the butchers of Hamas must be held accountable for the war they unleashed. Nobody else they unleashed on innocent civilians in Israel two Saturdays ago. There is no room for rationalizing or equivocating. When animals attack innocent people and slaughter young people at a music festival and elderly Holocaust survivors in their homes, there can be no quarter. We would not give it here, and we should not give it there either. Terrorists, under any banner, must be eradicated at all costs. Threats from Iran or North Korea or anyone else must be met with American strength. So on that note, I urge Republicans to get on the same page and unify behind a Speaker of the House so at least someone around here can project American strength here at home and around the world. God knows that it's never going to be the fading Joe Biden projecting strength. So... Let's hear from those who saw what really happened on the ground on October the 7th, when unsuspecting and unarmed citizens were confronted by stone-cold killers from Hamas. I want you to hear it. If you're not sure what Hamas did to those defenseless Israeli citizens during the bloodthirsty raid, listen to the eyewitness accounts that were first on the scene after the massacres had happened. Listen. The first house we saw was a couple, father and mother, sitting there on the knees on the floor. They were on the knees, now they were head down, hands tied to the back. On the other side of the dining room was seven-year-old child, boy and a girl, I would say about six years old sitting just against the, the parents, hands tied to the back, same position. The bodies were tortured. While now, st start to use imagination. Who was tortured before? Who saw if this was, <coughs> if, no, if this was a purpose? If this was the children looking at the parents being tortured, the parents seen, and when I say tortured, I will say missing body pieces. An eye, just taken out an eye, one eye, fingers being, fingers being And all, all this happened, and by the end, they all had a bullet, and still not finished. In the middle, there's a table. Those terrorists were sitting and eating their, their, their Saturday meal that was prepared for this family. They just took it, and they ate this meal while torturing these children. They sat and ate their dinner while torturing the children cutting off fingers and gouging out eyes while people were alive. This is what went on. And here is the American insanity I've witnessed my entire life. We act like we are on the side of democracy, freedom, and human rights. But the truth is, America is often on all sides of regional wars. We supply money and munitions to everyone. Here's some for you, and here's some for you, and you guys fight it out amongst yourselves, which they do. This, by the way, is exactly what... Dwight Eisenhower, the president, was warning us about the military-industrial complex doesn't care about who is at war as long as somebody is. And the more wars, the better. Because there's a lot of money to be made on this deal. Money here and money there. And right now, the cash train is running to both sides like it always does. Like it has so many times before. It continues on. The administration cannot say how it will keep millions of American dollars, by the way, from funding more terrorist attacks. 